This is the first Sunday which we light our Advent candle. This is the first Sunday which we begin to prepare the way of Jesus. So let us join in worship together. Let us join in this community together. Whether we join here in person, whether we've come together online, we are here. This is our time and our place and our space for worship. We belong here. This is our community. The uh, announcements are varied. <laughs> the, let's see what's going on. I guess I need a new battery for my thing that makes the slideshow advance. It's not working for me. There we go. So this week at church, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, the quilters are gathering downstairs. Um, we have next Sunday is Advent 2, which is Mitten Tree Sunday. Now, uh, the tradition with Mitten Tree Sunday is that we all bring mittens and hats and we decorate a tree as the, after the children tell the story. It's going to be a little different this time. Um, we're asked to, uh, we're going to ask you to bring your mittens and your hats, but put them in boxes and baskets that will be uh, in the entryway to gather them, and then uh, the, the actual decorating of the tree will be uh, taken on by a couple of our, our youth from the congregation, so and they will do that as part of the story. So we've come up with a sort of a, a unique way of, of making this happen, but I'm so joyful that we are able to make it happen. So uh, thank you for everyone participating in, uh, in uh, making the Mitten Tree event happen. If you would like to get mittens or uh, hats for the mitten tree, there were some for sale in the narthex, in the entryway from the porch there. Um, also, um, the angel tree is happening and in a different way, but still happening, so that's wonderful. And if you would like to purchase angels, you are asked to remain seated after the church service is over and let everyone else file out, and then, like we did with the tickets, then go out and, and buy the angels at that time, okay? So that's how we'll, we'll do that, and so that will enable us to, to keep our social distancing and whatnot. Um, another thing about today uh, is uh, we are asking the stewards to remain today for a brief meeting following the church service. So if you could just remain uh, seated until the church uh, people uh, clear out, and then we will have a very brief meeting of the stewards following the service. I think that's everything from that list. I hope you've had a chance to look at the beautiful decorations. They are lovely, and our church is well decked out, and we are grateful and thankful for everyone who, who took the time uh, and the effort and the energy to make uh, it look so beautiful. So thank you very, very much. It is wonderful. Okay, making sure I get through all my list. Um, 
So yes, so next Sunday is the Midtree Sunday, the Sunday after that, the Sunday school is going to leave the service, again, in a very unique and different way, but it's going to happen. And uh, on December 13th, this is a regular stewards meeting, but we do have to have a very brief meeting today after church. Um, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, please call Pamela as soon as possible to make reservations for our seating for Christmas Eve so that uh, we can lay out the space and make sure it works and that we can have uh, everyone here join together um, for our time uh, for that special service. So, yes, please do that. I think that's everything in front of me. Um, I don't think I forgot anything, but I might have. Is there anything else? Yeah, Evie, thank you. It is up here somewhere. Once you said it, I realized it's here, but I don't see it in my pile of papers. I'm sorry, it might have been misplaced. Oh, <laughs> thank you. In keeping with our Christmas tradition, the UCW will again be decorating the church with poinsettias placed in memory of our loved ones. A memorial list will be posted of all the names of those who have chosen to honor. The cost is $8, and if you could contact Kathleen McDonald or Evie Monroe, uh, your options. They have all kinds of different options uh, to, to get the fine, to make the transfer. So there's e-transfers and envelopes and directly. So um, that's all listed, will be listed in next week's bulletin. The last date to accept memorials will be Tuesday, December 15th, and the memorial list will be posted on Sunday, December 20th. So that's for your information. So yes, good, thank you. Uh, is there anything else coming before the community at this time? Wonderful. Then, let us join together in our call to worship. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit, we trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, we gather in worship this day at the beginning of our Advent journey. We gather with anticipation. We gather with hope. You, O oh God, have gathered us today and called us to be on the lookout, to watch for injustice, to watch for iniquity, to watch for those places in our lives, in our community, where your presence and your peace is needed. We come and worship today to keep alert, to turn our eyes out to the world and into our own nature, and watch for the ways that we have moved away from your love and ways for us to turn back toward the grace and the peace that you offer to humanity. We come to worship hoping, worship, hoping anticipating, expecting and waiting. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our offering has been gathered. It has been brought up and brought together. All of the various ways that the offering has been given, it's been given here in our sanctuary, it's been given through people all over Canada and the world. We have people watching from right across Canada, as far as we have few people in Alberta, some people in BC. We even have uh, our, our foreign exchange student, Elena, watching from Brazil. So we are a worldwide uh, church, and we are so uh, happy for all of the ways in which uh, we all can continue to support this ministry. And so for the offerings made today, for the offerings given this week, the many ways in which we continue to support and sustain this important ministry of this congregation and of the church and the world. We are thankful. Let us pray. God, whose faithfulness exceeds the limits of the earth, accept these gifts of our hearts and hands. 
May they be multiplied and magnified as the living presence of Christ's peace in the world. Amen. Our first hymn is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. O God, let us prepare ourselves to be touched by the witness of your scripture. Our hearts and our minds are open. So today we're reading from the Gospel of Mark. Um, it is found in the New Testament. If you're, if you're reading along in your Bible and you want to find Mark, you go to the last quarter of the Bible. Uh, Matthew, Mark. Mark is the second Gospel. It's uh, the shortest Gospel. It's like a fast version. If you're looking for a quicker way to read the story of Jesus, the Gospel of Mark is for you. It gets right into the action very quickly, and it sums things up very quickly. So it's, it's a very fast-paced Gospel. And so we're reading today from chapter 13, um, where, where things are ramping up. Um, the, the next chapter, chapter 14, will be the, the Passover meal, the Last Supper, and then the arrest. And so things are, are moving along very quickly. And right here, Jesus has been talking to his disciples. He's been talking to a small group of them. And he's been talking to them about end times. Um, he's been talking about how, uh, how the future is going to look. And so it's this sort of um, eschatology. It's like the theology of the end of times people would draw from these scriptures. I'm just going to read you the end part, though, because the end is sort of Jesus' summation of what he's talking about today. And what he's saying is, keep your eyes open. Be alert. Let's listen to what Jesus tells the disciples this day as they're sitting and talking on the Mount of Olives. And let's listen to what he's saying to us today. Jesus sums things up by saying, so be alert. Watch for and pray. For you never know when that time might approach. And he goes on to say, The situation is like a man who went on a journey, and when he departed, he left his servants in charge of the house. Each of them had their own job to do. And the person left, and the man left the porter to stand at the door watching. So stay awake. Because no one knows when the master of the house is coming back. Could be in the evening or at midnight, when the rooster crows, or in the morning. Stay awake. Be alert. 
So when he suddenly returns, the master will find you sleeping. The teaching I am giving the four of you is for everyone who will follow me. Stay awake. Keep your eyes open. This is our gospel according to Mark. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of God, descend upon us, making our hearts an altar in your love for flame. Amen. I don't know if you picked up on it, but there's a definite theme in that reading. It repeats several times. Stay awake. Keep your eyes open. I would really appreciate that. Because really, I'm only, I'm only kind of seeing your eyes. So, like of any time, really, today would be a great day. Stay awake. Keep alert. Um, and when I was reading that, I was like, okay, stay awake, keep alert, I got it. Like you said it several times, Jesus, I'm with you. But this is Hope Sunday. Shouldn't we be reading about hope? The reading, the candle, it's all about hope on Hope Sunday. There's four Sundays in Advent. There's hope, peace, joy, and love, and this one is hope. So I would expect to read about hope. But I'm reading about staying awake, keeping alert. So what does this have to do with hope? What are we staying awake for? What does this have to do with our Advent journey, this journey where we are preparing for Jesus? We're preparing for Christmas. Well, what's going on here? Well, if we look back, um, to the beginning of chapter 13 we're going to see sort of the background of what's going on so jesus and his disciples were walking through jerusalem and they were just walking along taking in the sights and one of them one of the disciples just all of a sudden is awestruck all of a sudden he, he looks at the temple and he's just like like, did it, does that ever happen to you? Like, things that you walk by all the time, and we just don't really pay attention to, but sometimes when we walk by them, we actually see them. Like, and maybe we see them every day, but we don't actually see them. You know what I mean? Like, this happened to me not that long ago, and I, I think it was because uh, somebody had mentioned it to me, and then I took notice of it. But I walk around Westville a lot, and I walk by the Cenotaph one day, and it's there, right? You walk by it. It's there, it's always there, it's by the post office, we see it. But one day I saw it, and I was like, that is a beautiful piece of art. It is beautiful, it's amazing. It's breathtaking when you just actually stop and see it. So this is what happened to the disciple. He was just walking by a structure that he walks by all the time, the temple in Jerusalem, which is huge like huge and so he's walking by it and all of a sudden he kind of realizes the majesty of it it's amazing it's breathtaking and it's massive and he says teacher i can't believe the size of these stones the stones that make up the temple are are like big really big really big stones he says look at this magnificent building and Jesus answers him and says, look closely at these magnificent buildings. Someday, there won't be one of these great stones left on another. Everything will be thrown down. What? But it's interesting because nobody says, what? <laughs> you know, that doesn't happen in the scripture. There's no like, it takes quite a long time. It's later on in the day, actually, towards the evening. They're at the Mount of Olives. They're far away from this temple situation. But the disciples, four of his disciples, uh, kind of get him off to the side. And they say, uh, Jesus, what do you mean? <laughs> the temple is huge. And it's so uh, sturdy and well-built. And it's been around forever. What do you mean it's, it's going to be laid flat? What do you mean it's going to be destroyed? That doesn't make any sense. Tell me more. 
And so then Jesus starts talking to them. And um, he starts using this type of poetry, this type of reflection. He's drawing from books like Daniel and Isaiah, and we call this type of, of, of thinking, of speaking, of, of uh, telling a story, we call it apocalyptic literature. And I know when I just said the word apocalypse, y'all went, <laughs> That means a meteor's going to crash into the earth or a nuclear war or something like that. But that's not what apocalyptic literature means. That's what apocalyptic movie genre is all about. And that's popular uh, type of movie and book type. But that's not what that word means in Greek. In Greek, it means revelation. So it's a type of speaking, a type of storytelling that reveals something. So Jesus is, is revealing, he's offering the disciples a revelation of the future. And he's doing it poetically, he's doing metaphor, he's doing lots of metaphor. But basically, what he sums up at the end is, keep awake. Keep your eyes open, look ahead. Again, like I said, this is Hope Sunday. I was really hoping <laughs> that he'd say something about hope. So what does it have to do with hope? When I was, so this is Hope Sunday, so all week, or last week, I was thinking about hope, and I was struck by how often I say hope. I say hope a lot. And then, have you ever done that when you say something way too many times, then it starts to sound weird? <laughs> so like, if you say hope a lot, the word starts to really sound weird. I, I, I get you to do it, just do it sometime when you're home. Um, I say hope a lot. I like. I, I hope I, uh, you coming over later? I hope so. Uh, uh, hopefully we'll be home by five. Uh, I hope that uh, supper doesn't burn. Uh, I hope a lot of things. I say I hope a lot. Um, I hope the numbers go down. I hope the vaccine uh, is swift and efficient at, uh, it, as it moves through the world. I hope we can get back to normal. I hope a lot. But when we hope, when we say the word hope, um, it's very focused on us, isn't it? It's typically about me. And it's typically that I have this optimism that things will work out, but they'll work out for the best, and it's usually for me or for the people that I love. That's how I usually use the word hope. Uh, this type of hope is focused on that things will work out specifically for good, and for good from the worldview that I have, that it will be good for me, and that things will work out in the way that I expect them to, like I expect them. So I hope that supper won't be burned, I expect that if we do the right things it won't be burned, and if it's not burned that's good for me. Right? We don't usually hope about things that have nothing to do with us. We don't usually, I don't usually sit at home and go, hi, I hope Dorothy Lane doesn't burn supper tonight. <laughs> I mean, unless she was inviting us over, and maybe, or maybe Donnie doesn't burn supper tonight. I really don't know what's going on there. I mean, that's very specific for them, so I don't normally sit there and think about that kind of hope. So this is personal hope, right? This is how we use hope in the English language, but I do now hope that, that nobody burns supper in your house tonight because it'll probably blame me if it happens in this morning. Biblical hope is different. Biblical hope has its own definition, uh, and it's the way that we translate the words um, from the Hebrew and from the Greek, um, and the, what those words mean. And it's really interesting because the biblical hope is defined as waiting for God. That's what biblical hope is. Biblical hope is focused on God and what God is doing in the world. And it's defined specifically as waiting, expectation, anticipation. And we hear about this type of hope all through the scriptures. And Isaiah and Psalms, when they use hope, it's about waiting and anticipating and expecting God to do something. Biblical hope is that God will break in to creation, 
to time and space. And that because of God's past faithfulness to humanity, God will encounter humanity again. Like that time with Jesus, right? And turn our world around and upside down. And that the changes will be unimaginable. Biblical hope is not something that we can imagine the outcome of. It's not optimism based on the odds, but hope based on the amazing work of God. My personal hope is very focused, and it becomes very small when you compare it to biblical hope, the hope of the first candle of heaven. Biblical hope is something beyond our imagining, beyond our comprehension. And even when it appears that there's no evidence that things will get better, that there's no evidence that things will go well, biblical hope is to choose hope anyway. That, they, that you trust, that we trust in the God's character, that humanity can change, and that creation can change, and that it can become new and different. Years ago, I read a book. I read other books. That sounded really weird, didn't it? One time, I read a book. Um, no, <laughs> but years ago, I read this book. And it was called, uh, it was called Man's Search for Meaning. It was by a man named Viktor Frankl. And uh, it affected me. And I think about it so often. And it's, it's defined as a tribute to hope. And it describes, it's Viktor Frankl's memoir of when he was in a concentration camp during World War II. And in that terrible world that he lived in, lived through, he experienced this biblical hope. It wasn't a personal hope. He really had no personal hope for himself in the world that he was living in. But he saw the hope for humanity. He saw the hope for humanity in the generosity and in the good deeds and in the love that was given by people who had nothing to give. He saw this amazing, creative, creation, God-based hope that something radical could happen, that God could break in, and that something unexpected could occur. A biblical hope, the hope of Advent, is a radical hope that we keep watching for, we keep waiting for. We're waiting for God to bring about a future that is surprising as a crucified man rising from the dead. Or a baby that is a savior of the world being born in a manger. So let us remind ourselves of God's steadfast love as we wait, as we watch, as we keep our eyes open for the beginning of a new thing a new way, a new world with God. Let us hope. Amen. Our next hymn is It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. to do this on the company, so I hope it goes well. <laughs>
was beautiful. Thank you so much. Let us pray. God of Advent, God of the mysteries of the universe, you keep us waiting. You, the God of all time, want us to wait for the right time in which to discover who we are, where we must go, who will be with us, and what we must do. You keep us looking. You, the God of all space, want us to look in all the right and wrong places for signs of hope, for people who are hopeless, for visions of a better world which will appear among the disappointments of the world we know. You keep us loving. You, the God whose name is love, want us to be like you, to love the loveless and the unlovely and the unlovable, to love without jealousy or design or threat, and the most difficult of all, to love ourselves. And in all of this, you keep us through hard questions with no easy answers, through failing where we hope to succeed and making an impact where we felt we were useless, through the patience and the dreams and the love of others, and through Jesus Christ and his spirit, you keep us. God of all, we thank you for the waiting, for the looking, the loving, and the keeping, all that Advent reminds us of again and again. God of compassion and caring, we pray silently for those that we hold in our hearts this day. Source of all light, we praise you for the wisdom of your word and the hope of your promises. With all your saints on earth and in heaven, we commit ourselves to the dawning of your new age. And we pray together as we were taught by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So let us go out into the world. Let us go out into the world watching and waiting and keeping alert. Let us go out into the world hopeful and seeing the hope that is surrounding us. Let us go into the world with the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen.